welcome to the network and cyber security lecture series myself darshan bidi assistant professor department of ece sjb institute of technology bengaluru the network and cyber security subject code is 17ec835 this subject is professional elective for 8th semester students in this subject we are going to study the network security concepts and also a cyber security concept it consists of five modules first three modules covers the network security concept and another two modules covers the cyber security concept module 1 is transport level security in that we are going to discuss web security consideration security socket layer transport layer security https and secure shell protocols first considering the web security consideration in that we are going to study web security threat and different web traffic security approaches in secure socket layer we are going to study the secure socket layer architecture secure socket layer protocol stack and secure socket layer record protocol operation then we are going to study the chain cipher script protocol alert protocol and hashing protocol operations in transport layer security we are going to study the hash function and some cryptographic function next hypertext transport protocol for secure in that we are going to study the connection initiation and connection closure operation next secure shell is called as ssh in that we are going to study study ssh protocol stack in this session we are going to discuss transport layer security you can call it as tls tls is an iet standardization initiative so iet means institute of electronics and telecommunication engineering so to produce an internet standard version of ssl ssl is nothing but secure socket layer in that the transport layer security i proposed the internet standard in rfc 5246 so it's almost similar to the ssl version 3 secure socket layer version 3 and we are going to highlight the differences between that rfc 5246 and ssl version 3 in transport layer security we are going to consider message authentication code in this we are considering the two differences between uh, we are having ssl secure socket layer version 3 and uh, transport layer security max schemes max is message authentication code scheme considering that the max calculation the trans port layer security make use of hmac algorithm hmac is nothing but hash function mac is message authentication code defines the rfc 2104 version considering hmac is defined as so considering this equation hmac of m the code use key is secret key is equal to h of dash function of k plus k plus is the thing but secret key the or function of opac opac is a going to consider repeated 64 times output pad so i pad is input pad opac is output pad that we are going to consider here. so concatenated with hash function of secret key with the input pad i pad so all this information again that concatenated with the message input okay so you considering that three functions here so secret key so is xor with the output pad so secret key is i pad means r xor with the input pad and Considering the message input, 
So these three we are going to concatenate. Then we are going to apply hash function that going to gives the h man function. Considering that h defines the embedded hash function, m is the message input to h man. K plus is the secret key padded with zeros on the left. So that the result is equal to the block length of the hash code. So for that we are going to use MD5 and SHE. So MD5 is the message digest that we are going to use to the hash function. Mainly in the hash function we are going to use MD5 and the SHE algorithms we are going to use. MD5 is message digest, SHE is secure hash algorithm that both the block length is the vital bits so considering that the ipad is that is 36 in hexadecimal repeated 64 times and output pad opad is 5c in hexadecimal it's repeated 64 times but input and output pads size are vital bits we go to consider the vital bits are the uh, sizes of the iPad and OPAD. Here SSL version 3 also uses the same HMAC algorithm except that padding bytes are concatenated with the secret key. So rather than XR with the secret key padded to the block length. So here in the both the cases the level security we are going to use so for uh, transport level security and message authentication the code calculation encompasses the fields indicated in the following expression concerning the expression mac this expression so it gives that mac means that message authentication code mac write secrets comma sequence number go to consider a so three or four tls types we are going to use so tls compressed type so tls compressed version tls compressed length and tls compressed fragment so here we are going to consider that when you are going to write mac write secret considering the sequence number first that is concatenated with the compress then compress type with the compress version then compress length and fragment considering the type version and length and fragment of the compression so mainly we are going to consider here is compression okay so message authentication code so in the message authentication code calculation covers all the fields covered by the Secure socket layer version 3 calculation. See extra fields we are going to add means that is the field version. The field version we are going to add extra here. So consider pseudo random function in transport layer security. So make use of this pseudo random function to expand the secrets into blocks of data for the purpose of key generation and validation okay here in the transport layer security we are going to use pseudo random function and so we are going to so expand the secrets secret keys into the blocks of data for the purpose of key generation so then we are considering the objective is to make use of relatively small shared secret value but to generate a longer blocks of data in the way that secret key when you are going to generate a secret key the secure from the kinds of attacks made on hash function and message authentication codes so here we need to consider that main when you are going to generate the key and when you are going to do validation so we need to so consider a blocks of data so for that we need to consider the the secret keys so for that purpose we are going to use pseudo random function tls function 
कंसर यू कैन कंसिडर एज ए पी एश कंसर सीक्रेट एंड सीन सो इन दिस फिगर यू कैन ऑब्जर्व दैट सो हाउ दी एच मैक ऑपरेशन विल बी हैपन सो वी आर गोइंग टू गिव द इनपुट दैट वी आर कंसिडरिंग एज ए सीन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू गिव द सीक्रेट टू मेक सिक्योर वी आर गोइंग टू गिव सीक्रेट सो एच मैक ऑपरेशन हैश मैसेज आइडेंटिफिकेशन कोड देर वी आर गोइंग टू गेट ए ऑफ वन दैट दैट इज वन आउटपुट दैट देन दैट आउटपुट ऑफ दी एच मैक इज कंकैटिनेटेड विथ दी अगेन सीन देन वी आर गोइंग टू अप्लाई दी एच मैक द सेकेंड लेवल देन वी आर गोइंग टू गिव दी सीक्रेट देन दैट यू आर गोइंग टू पुट इट इन टू दी फॉर्मेट दैट देन आउटपुट ऑफ दैट फर्स्ट एच मैक इज give to the a of 1 we are going to consider a of 1 you are going to give to the second h mac function again we are going to use secret keys that that is the uh, shared secret key that the secret we are going to use again the output of that second h mac is we are considering is a of 2 again we are going to concatenate with the again seeds then we are going to apply the h mac again then we are going to put it into the the format in a of 2 that we are considering and we are going to apply so h mac of h mac function so there we are going to get a of 3 function again that is concatenate with the seed then apply the h mac function with the secret key or then you are going to get that data you are going to put it into the format so like that so that different different that uh, the layer we are going to get so for that we are going to consider that iteration that one iteration a of 1 a of 2 a of 3 like that so how much length we require so that much we can apply the h mac function depending on the the block number of blocks of data that that afterwards we can find out the hash size in that at the end this is depending on how much data is there that if the data is less so we can get that as size is also less if you are having more data so we can have to so take that the block of data then we are need to apply the h mac function in the last slide we seen that pseudo random function is based on the data expansion function apply the hash function so secret and see considering so we are going to apply the h mac function hash of secret of a1 concatenated with the c then concatenated with that h mac of hash function of secret of a of 2 concatenated with the c similarly so we are going for the a3 also that means so first level second level and third level so this a of 0 a of 1 and a of 2 are you can consider is a of 0 is a seed we are going to consider a of 1 or a of y is gives the h mac hash function of secret a of i minus 1 so if we are going to vary that if you are going to put i1 here means a of 1 minus 1 is 0 if you put a of 2 is 2 minus 1 is a of 1 so that's why we are going to give we are going to write the equation a of i is equal to h mac hash function message authentication code hash of secret comma a of i minus 1 pseudo random functions defined as a secret comma label comma seed is going to give consider secret key and label we are going to mention that and seed that input we are going to consider example p hash s1 comma label concatenated with the seed prf takes an input a secret value and identifying the label and a seed value and produces an output of arbitrary length consider alert codes in transport layer security 
so transport layer security supports for all type of alert ports defined in secure socket layer version 3 so with an expansion of no certificate means in the transport layer security so it's going to support all types of alert score codes defined in the secure socket layer version 3 Concern the number of additional codes defined in the transport layer security. Consider record overflow. The TLS record was received with a payload whose length exceeds 214 plus 2048 bytes. Or the ciphertext decrypted to the length of greater than 214 plus 1024 bytes. If record overflow occurs, so once so we are going to decrypt the information, so we are going to get the plain text. So that the length is greater than that 1024 plus 214 bytes means that occurs as the record overflow as such. Consider unknown CA, unknown certificate. A valid certificate chain or a partial chain was received so in that we are going to compare with that the certificate so this is trusted certificate or not this is is possible to accept that certificate or not we are going to verify that next we are going to get the alert uh, signal or alert message for the access denied a valid certificate was received but when access control was applied, the sender decided not to proceed with the negotiation. So in that time, we are considering the access denied will be happen. In that time, we are going to get the alert message. Consider decoder. So when you are going to send the information and we are going to receive the information, encoding, decoding will be happen. The message could not be decoded. Either a feed was out of its specified range or the length and the message we are going to consider is that whichever the message is received that is incorrect so we cannot decode it properly so in that time if we get the decode error occurs means so it will give the alert message then the protocol version if the protocol version whichever the the client is using that is not supporting in that time also we are going to get the alert message insufficient security return instead of handshake failure when the negotiation has failed specifically because the server requires ciphers more secure than those supported by the client here we are going to consider insufficient security so authentication should be there confidentiality should be there integrity should be there if anything mismatches, that means we are going to get the alert message. Next one is unsupported extension. So it's consider that sent by clients that receives an extended server alone containing an extension not in the corresponding client alone. So is that if you are going to consider when you are going to exchange data from the client to server starting they are going to exchange the allow messages if it is unsupported extension means so in that time we are going to get the alert message next is internal error so if anything internal error happens when you are going to communicate from peer to peer a client to server so you are going to get the alert message then decrypt error okay after receiving the information we are going to decrypt in uh, cipher text to get the plain text so in that time so we are going to validate the whichever the keys secret keys we are going we are used in that particular encryption and decryption if the decryption error occurs means in that time we are going to get the alert message so considering some other uh, remaining uh, alert messages are user cancelled so this handshake is being cancelled for some reason unrelated to the protocol failure. This is 
not as not happens in the protocol so from the user side so he is going to cancel manually if something happens at the user side in that time so then we are going to get the alert message second one is no renegotiation this is sent by the client is response to a allow request or by the server in response to a client allow after in initial and shaking that so means the client and server they are going to exchange the and shaking signals initially that so that they are going to send the allow message for that the server also going to send the allows alert means allow messages either these messages would normally result in renegotiation we cannot negotiate that we need to use that so in that time we are going to uh, block that information so in that time so alert indicates that the sender is not able to renegotiate so this when you are going to block that messages means it's going to send a warning message consider cipher source there are several small differences between the cipher suits available under secure socket layer version 3 and under transport layer security so consider first one is key exchange so transport layer security supports all the key exchange techniques of secure socket layer version 3 with the extension of forteza all type of key exchanges so it will support that next symmetric encryption algorithm so transport layer security includes all of the symmetric encryption algorithm found in secure socket socket layer version 3 with the exception of forteza consider client certificate types in that the transport layer security defines the following certificate types to request in the certificate and request messages so consider rsa sign dss sign rsa fixed and dss fixed is rsa and dss are the cryptographic algorithms so these algorithms are defined in the secure socket layer version 3 so in addition to that rsa so other the protocols we are going to use in addition to the uh, rssi rsa fixed and dss fixed algorithm and also we are going to use diffie l1 algorithms diffie l1 for uh, encryption and decryption purpose in the uh, cryptography so consider rsa and dss for uh, transport layer security the rsa sign and dss sign types are used for the function a separate signing type is not needed to sign diffie l1 parameters and in the transport layer security it does not include the forteza schemes so we are having some schemes the forteza schemes so we are not going to include the forteza schemes in the so transport layer security next is padding padding is nothing but adding extra bit to match with the so format in that secure socket layer the padding is added prior to the encryption of a user data so before the encryption we are going to use the padding is the minimum amount required so that the total size of the data to be encrypted is a multiple of cipher block length so when you are having the block length to match it to the black black length, uh, block length so we are going to use the padding techniques so in that so how much amount of so the data we need to pad in that we are going to consider in the transport layer security the padding can be any amount that results in a total that is multiple of cipher block length up to a maximum of 255 bytes so padding can be happens maximum of 255 bytes So consider example with the plain text plus message authentication code plus padding. Consider the 
length byte is 79 bytes long then the padding length can be 1 9 17 and so on up to 249 bytes that we can do that so one is we can do 80 and we can do 88 and we can do 96 so like that when you are going to add that 1 9 and 17 to that so maximum we can add up to 249 a variable padding length may be used to frustrate attacks based on analysis of the length of exchanged messages. When you are going to use different the length of padding so that the messages is also having the, uh, the different lengths so that the attackers may confuse in that so we are also use this technique. Thank you.